Okay, today I'm going to look at um, splicing back together some damaged beta videotapes. I just bought about 200 of them, along with some old beta machines, and some of them are chewed up like this. So I'll see if I can repair them. Now what I might first do, this one's actually got a bit of dirt and stuff inside it. So I think I'll open a good tape and look at exactly how it's put together. And we can, it's always handy to have one to compare the little bits and pieces that the tape goes around, the little posts and um, little wiper things at the front. And we'll probably have to press as a little tab in the end just to lift the door up. If these have labels on them, you've basically got to cut the label because the thing won't come apart with a label on it. So yeah, what I'm interested in, there's a couple of little posts here that you, these will actually fall out if you're not careful. Well, I think they will. Uh, these ones seem to be actually joined on in VHS, they come out. And then there's a couple of other little posts. They must be the fixed one. That's the little roller ones. That, oh yeah, that lifts out if I want to get it out. And then it's got these little wiper things, which I think are to brush any dust off the tape before it comes back inside the cassette case and probably prevents any dirt like this one's got coming out of the t case as well onto the heads and we do have a couple of little brake levers here so if you want to turn one of these reels it won't it'll turn one way if there's any slack in the tape and then it'll stop so you press on the little tab and we can basically pull that out which is going to be necessary when you're splicing normally but at least i've got one there as a reference and I guess while I'm in here, I probably should. It is pretty filthy, this one, so I might as well... Oh, God, I don't know what the hell got inside this tape. I think it was just because it was sitting... A lot of these were in the box the wrong way around. So with the flap side sticking out of the box. And that doesn't help. If stuff falls down, it can fall down, especially the tape's upside down, it can fall down into it. Which I think is what this one was. A couple of them were caught out, sort of either not in the cardboard case at all or outside of the uh, little housing, little drawer things they had to put the tapes in or boxes. And I reckon it's got a bit of muck off, like a pot plant or something's probably got in there. I'm just going to brush the worst of this out. I think it'll be fine. I mean, you've got those little things, and it's easy enough for me to clean the video heads if anything does clog them up but I'd prefer to avoid it if possible and the underside of that's got a bit of stuff I might just wipe that off that could cause friction and you can actually see where it looks like it has been rotated I may have already played this tape briefly to see what's on it so I probably should ideally may I'll just get a bit of paper towel maybe I'll just clean up in this bit underneath because that's where the tapes spools sit and ideally you don't want any friction there and it's just like a slightly raised piece around the edge of this or close to the edge of it i'll just wipe all the dirt off that just so there's no extra friction there even though these tapes aren't likely to be needed much other than i just go through them and if there's anything interesting on them i want to record it now this is going to be the fun bit getting this back in without crunching the tape up so i'll just move that little piece out of the way if i do it from a distance That's a big if. Let's take that little thing off. I should be able to roll that back in as I put it in carefully. And we may have to let off the brake a bit so I've got a bit of slack here. And then we go around that other pin and back around this other little brush thing, little wiper thing. And that's back the way it should be. I hope it is. <laughs> And that's a, might need that as a reference on this other one. So this one we'll have a look at. In theory, we could just, how do we disable the brakes in this particular machine? Or is it just the little flap that disables it maybe? Oh, maybe having the flap up, does that do something? If they're that loose, see the big problem is if I let this flap go, it'll crunch the tape. Which we don't want, because we're trying to get rid of the crunch section of the tape. So I guess what I could do is use a bit of insulation tape. I might even be able to, normally I'd pull these things apart and do them. I might just see if I can 
come up with an even dodgier way to do it. Especially if they've got labels on them, so if we stick it maybe underneath in that little middle bit there, and across that and onto the top, that probably is actually enough to do the job I want to do. I guess the main hassle is going to be... But yeah, those brakes are, are loose. And basically all we need to do just to just to do this to get something off the tape, which is all I intend to do, is try and cut the end off nice and square. It doesn't have to be perfect. And cut the other end off, get removing any crunch tape. If it's really important what's on there, you'd go right to the the bit where it's first really badly crunched and save every last bit, but I'm just going to cut it back. I don't care if I lose a little bit extra. I doubt there's anything of value on there. Throw that bit away. And the obviously it's critical that you get these two surfaces so there's no twists or anything in the tape. I'm not sure how this is going to work because I don't think I've done it with the... I think it's easy with the case out of the way. Oh, damn, my cut didn't come out the best there. I might get that right up in the sharp part of the scissors. Still didn't get it quite square. So you can just keep doing it until you do get it square. See, sometimes if the scissors aren't super sharp, the last bit of the cut will go on a weird angle. And all I'm going to use is just this standard... I don't have any VHS... I used to have some VHS splicing tabs which if you can still get them, they, they're basically the same with tape or very close. But even if you don't have those, and I'm not sure if they're sold anymore, they probably aren't. If we get a bit of this standard sticky tape, and again, cut it square to make life easier. And you basically just want to cut off a strip, get rid of that little waste bit. The same width or slightly less than the tape. Probably doesn't need to be that long, but that'll do. And the main thing is to, obviously it goes on the back of the tape, not on the front. There's a risk you'll damage the video heads if it's on the front. The front being the piece that basically sticks out away from the case. The back being the bit that's, you know, basically on the back when you lift up the flap. And if we can get one end of this, you want to get this nice and square on here. And less width than the tape itself, which I didn't do the best job there. It's slightly wider. So we don't want any of that stuff sticking out over the edge. You can just trim it off. But that's the main thing. And we don't really want any tape in the gap. We don't want any gap between the two faces or two pieces of tape on the face here. I'll just take that off. Because that, again, we don't want a sticky surface for anything to stick to in the tape path of the machine or for the heads to hit. And this actually probably is easier than pulling the tape to bits. I am probably handling the tape a bit more than I would ideally do. But if you can get those two faces to roughly butt together as square as possible, press them onto that bit of tape. I would made that one a bit wide, so I'm gonna have to trim the edge again. And it's trying to loop up, of course, and just crunch itself up. So I might want one of those reels back in a bit. Or maybe both of them back in a bit because I haven't touched the very end bits there. Tighten that up. And what I may just do is get a cotton bud and a bit of methylated spirits. And just wipe the worst of my greasy fingerprints off there. Probably won't matter but it doesn't hurt to do that because it'll keep the machine happy. It's not the perfect thing. It'll probably make a bit of noise and stuff as it goes over the video heads. But holding that flat back up while we take the tape off, that metho will dry off soon. Yeah, it's pulling slightly up, so I didn't get that perfectly square, but in the machine under tension, it should be all right once we put some tension on that. As long as there's no, like, a big gap in between the two bits of tape where the sticky tape can stick through, and as long as the t sticky tape's not sticking out over the sides, that should be fine. I so say I haven't got that perfectly square, so it might be a little bit iffy when it goes through the machine. Might try and do a little bit better than that next time. But that should be fine. And the other thing I'll just do is right. Spliced on this tape so that I know to basically toss it in the bin once I've had a look at it, seen what's on it. And also to ideally what you would do is probably start the tape 
just to one side of where the uh, we open this flap up. Uh, which way does it go? Yeah, it goes. I'm not sure with the beater machine. I think it. Yeah, well, that's the supply reel. I think so. What we can do is once those brakes are released, we can wind it on a bit. If I put that in the machine, hit zero on the counter, and basically then hit play, we should. Is that right? Does it go? Yeah, it goes onto that reel. So that is the supply side. So we'll be able to play all of this without it even touching that without my joint even touching the video heads. Right to the end of the tape. And once it's and then we can let it rewind right back to the beginning. And as long as we play that up to and not pass where it hits zero, zero, zero on the counter again, and we stop it just before it gets there, then there's no need for it to even touch the video heads at all. And we can then just, we've looked at everything on there, and if there's anything good, we record it, dump it off the machine at the same time. And then when we, yeah, we just avoid that spot altogether where the joint is, and then that can go straight in the dumpster when you're finished. Best to chuck it out, because there's no point risking damaging the machine or anything, or clogging up the heads. It's just really purely to get this tape going again. And we just want to just want to get them going again, just just so we can get whatever's on them off them, if there is, even is anything on them or anything good on them. All of these tapes seem to have something recorded on them. Some interesting old ad breaks, some interesting old shows, snippets of which I'm saving. I'm saving all the adverts and station IDs because I've probably got one of the only. Whoops! I just wrecked the tape a bit there. If you do let that door shut. It didn't really do much to be honest, but since this is nothing important, I'll pull that out a little bit more and cut that bit off. I can probably even recycle my bit of insulation tape there. But I've got a, you know quite a few station IDs and stuff off Taz TV and ABC Hobart here, which probably don't exist in many other places, especially since this machine was bought in in 1981. It's a, a quite an early Sanyo beta machine that these recorded on. It doesn't seem to want to stick. I probably should use a new piece of tape, but that should be enough just to hold it for now. So I've probably got some stuff that, yeah, most VCRs are bought more in 1983 and the like. Of course, another thing you can do is put this tape on a hard surface and cut it with a Stanley knife or the like. A scalpel or something is an even better way. I should have some sharper scissors here somewhere. So let me try some better scissors. Those old ones are pretty well shot, I think. Oh, yeah, much nicer. Tuck that away. Get rid of anything that's crinkled ideally, and oh, I'll just put more crinkles in there <laughs> by pulling it sideways like a, an idiot. That takes a little getting used to doing this again. And yeah, we can probably cut that. Sometimes it's easier to cut this tape a little bit. I'll start with these sharper scissors. Hopefully we can get a nicer edge on it. I don't need to go as wide. It's a matter of getting the hang of what width to do, but you can sort of guesstimate the width of the tape. That might actually be too wide. Should I stuff it up again? I think I'll... That is about the exact width of the tape. I think it ideally wants to be just ever so slightly less. I'm just always worried it's going to be too thin, but that should do. And I might even shorten this down a bit. You don't really need it. It's much harder to get it all square with the, long, the longer it is. So, making sure I've got the back. It's very difficult to get it absolutely perfect, but we can get it pretty close. It only needs even just a small amount of tape like that. And it's a matter of trying to get the other bit aligned as square as possible and overlapped. That is slightly off to one side, but there's no tape, because that tape's a bit thinner, there's no tape sticking through. And again, oh, well, I guess I should really, actually I don't want to get rid of the tape first, do I? I want to wind that back in, bit to one side, bit to the other, get the spice roughly in the middle. And my cotton bud's disappeared. Oh, looks like I need a new one. And that actually surprisingly doesn't have much of my fingerprints on there, but just in case there's grease and stuff, besides even what's in my skin and any dirt or dust, just give that a clean. There's a bit of dusty looking stuff there. I don't know what that is, but ew, something brown came off there. And just hold that flap up with your hand while you remove the tape. 
and let that shut. And again, we'll write spliced on it. And I guess if I get in the habit of doing these, there's quite a few of them, well, about 10 or so, I guess. Get in the habit of winding it here to that take up side. Yeah, because uh, when you rewind it goes that way, when we play it goes that way until that runs out, yep. So that's two of them done. So that system works quite well. You can, if you find that fiddly, that one's not damaged. If you find that too, too difficult to do, holding back the door and all that sort of thing, of course we can unscrew the case. This one's got a label on it. So, you can even just run a screwdriver or something along there, maybe not. Scissors, anything just along that join in the two halves of the tape. Knife will do. You can sort of fold them or sometimes just tear them off, but I find often just running a slot down, it's the safest way. And we've got to take, press our little tab in there, lift the door, put it down with the other side down. Those labels are still sticking a bit. And yeah, the other way, this way we'll have to press those little, they press out that way, press the brake, get a bit of clean tape out. Same on this side, press that brake out. And I find, sometimes find it easier to do it this way because you can basically sit them down onto a flat surface. It's a bit easier to line the, the sticky tape up that way try and cut that at 90 degrees to the tape get rid of our rubbish now if we're going to avoid these little loopy things happening and these don't really care too much what, what sort of surface you do them on just as long as they're away from magnets they're fine or strong magnetic fields of any sort Pretty resilient things. I didn't cut that real well. That's right, one end to the other one wasn't too good. I haven't cut that one the best either, but we'll cut that down to a bit more of a square. And this way, you can get the tape, flatten it out a bit. It's kind of easy to get the the splicing tape lined up with it better. This is how I think you were meant to do them. You could get a little kit thing with the splice tabs and a little thing to hold the tape and I think this is how they did it. That one's got a little bit of a gap there. So what I'll do is I'll use the method to try and remove any sticky stuff from that. It's probably not the end of the world but of course it wants to fold up. Just wind that back in trying to keep that splice so it ends up in the middle. And it don't tip the tape upside down or anything because it'll all fall to bits probably. So try and hold those reels in there. Well, I will give that a clean and I'll particularly clean that little patch in between with the sticky tape. And that should remove any glue off it. Then it's not really a hassle to anything and not likely to clog the heads. Just clean the whole bit. I probably am smearing a bit of that glue that I just wiped off. I should really use the other end of the cotton bud, I guess. And that should be fine. Then you've just got to hold the, the door up. You've just got to be held up out of the way to get it on there and something's not fitting, maybe it's the door itself. Just got to get those little pins in those little standoff things. Something's not happy here. I think it's just that little pin there is not going in for some reason. You can give that little standoff a flick and it still doesn't want to work. Well, they go together straight away. Okay, what's the problem with this one? There's always one, as soon as you do it on camera, they don't work. Even though you do a hundred of them and they work every time. There it goes, it just for some reason didn't want to... Wanted to catch and be a, a mongrel on video. And you just put your screws back in and again we'll probably follow the same procedure of move the tape off to one side 
market is spliced and then I can play the the rest of that tape then rewind it right while resetting it resetting the video machines counter at zero so I want it to go that way just get it out oh actually I probably should wind it a little bit extra now the thing because the problem with beta machines is they lace up and I'm not sure which reel they come off they pull out a great big loop of tape around the head so I think to be safe we probably should wind that a little bit further probably should do that with all these these are actually a great design you just got to open the door and they will will wind all right so a lot easier than VHS where you got to poke something up the bottom which not the end of the world but yeah, we'll put all those a bit further so we try and avoid it being pulled out on lace up with a VHS machine you've only got to move it ever so slightly but beta does pull out a big loop of tape and right spliced or whatever mark a big thing on the label I guess we should really put a big cross on there so we know they're dud tapes basically not to be given or sold to anyone or whatever some of these tapes can be worth a few dollars now just as blanks but I don't want to I def definitely wouldn't even give someone one that was spliced like that because you're asking for trouble they may work fine forever but it's really not worth the bother and the risk of damaging a machine or more likely just clogging it up Simply, no matter what, if they're worth thirty dollars each, you wouldn't bother unless you're really desperate and told someone what the risks were. Oh, I think it's actually this door's not moving a bit and not coming back together. So it might be the door hinges. Ooh, what are we doing here? Oh, that's just yeah. What is that there? I see the. So there's another thing you got to watch. Yeah, part of the. Oh, I see the door's got little um little bits behind that go behind the tape as well that's interesting so if you don't get that perfectly lined up that was actually these little flat little bits on the back here were actually sticking pushing onto the tape and they should go behind it so they're a little, little bit fiddly but it's worth getting them going in my case I just want to see what's on them I want to record anything that's useful on them and then you know I really don't care what happens to most of the tapes after that I'll keep a few as at least I've got some tests these would be good ones also just for test purposes I'll put a cross on that one as well I'll write dirt on it because again that one's tossing I think there was another one here that was for whatever reason I thought looked a bit dirty or something may have just had a lot of dust in here Usually best to put them on one side and give them a clean or something. There's a couple of others I've already done and maybe this is another dirty one. Yeah, oh you can see the quite a bit of dirt and muck in there. And it looks like there's another one that I thought was too dirty. 